What's up, everybody? Welcome to our side quest chat with Chris from ODR Hockey Heroes. Unfortunately, a transition from Adobe Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve 18 has ruined the video. We still have great audio. We still have an incredible interview from the creator of this very, very fun indie hockey game. Thank you for checking it out. Apologies on uh, the video not working. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Three Dads and a Console Side Quest Chat. Uh, this is a, you know, separate episodes that we do where we feature different creators, different, uh, you know, developers that we find interesting, that we like, and we want to support. And today, joined with me and Pez is Christopher from Treewood Studios, who we actually had the pleasure to meet at PAX. So, Chris, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. It was awesome meeting you guys there, and it's uh, wicked to circle back with you now. Well, you know, I can keep it. I keep it close. I keep it close. Well, you got to get the new one. We got the new one going, buddy. Oh, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> got yeah, yeah. Wall. I got mine hanging up on the wall. Yeah, so that's awesome. I love that little back wall you got there. I want half that stuff you got going on. Thanks, man. <laughs> Just wait till you see his Bergeron signed jersey and his uh, Char signed. I know it's not right up your, you know, the Toronto alley, but that's okay. I, what what ta- when do you take the trash out? What day is that? <laughs> oh no! Ah, okay. Goodbye, everybody. It's been fun. Me around. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. guys i can't say anything come on leaves or nothing <laughs> it's, it's, the bruins are uh, we'll see but this is going to be very fun for us again you if you're watching on the video at uh, youtube.com slash three dads on console we're all decked out in our bruins gear uh but chris was kind enough to uh parlay in a toronto winter classic kessel jersey the best yeah at least it's kessel on the back and at least at least it's a good number at least it's kessel. so he he came in peace so um, Chris is one the developer for ODR Hockey Heroes, and it's a game we played at Paxis. Could could you tell us a little bit about you know your game, what it's about, and why folks should be paying attention? Yeah, for sure. It's a basically old school hockey game from the '90s and early 2000s kind of thing. That uh, awesome era of extreme over the top arcade sports, um, big hits, uh, speedy players, lots of goals, power ups that turn players into pigeons and brick walls. Uh, no rules, obviously, just extremely. Fun focused and fast paced kind of thing. Excellent. Now, Pez, when you played the demo, um, what was what was what caught your attention most? Um the well, first off, when we played it at PAX, we dusted the two guys that we played with. <laughs> we not only destroyed those guys, but they wanted to play again. And I think yeah, Wabo was ta- I think Wabo was taking it easy on him, and I was like, "Knock this off." He felt bad. Let's, <laughs> let's yeah, yeah, yeah. I want them to buy guys. the game, dude. Like, I don't want to be them to be like, "Oh man, I stink at this. I'm not going to buy it." You know, then they shouldn't have come. Then they shouldn't have come and dealt with us. They should have came back. Yeah, just the next day. Yeah, that's it. it. So, uh, for me, it was a complete deviation from what we've seen in the previous works of hockey. Like, all we've had really is the EA uh, NHL series. If uh, if you've been playing hockey video games for a long time, NHL 2K kicked in like in the mid 2000s and then they were gone. And before that, it was like, you know, we had Wayne Gretzky 3D hockey. We had like um, um, Monster Hits. League, not Monster League football, but they had a hockey version. Mutant, uh, Mutant, Mutant hockey League. Hockey, Mutant yeah, Mutant hockey. hockey League. Yep. Um, you know, we've had like, we've have just had a ton of, of games. So going back to an arcade style after just getting uh simulation style hockey is it was fun man we had a blast playing with wava during our jimmy fun stream i played it at like one in the morning um and uh my chat loved it we had like 37 people in there they they were digging it um so yeah it was cool man it's it's great to just show people that there are other games out there that isn't made by a massive company Um, yeah 100 percent. yeah and what, yeah, like, it's a, it's kind of one of the big opportunities, I think, in the space is just to, like, bring back that innovation and just creativity and trying stuff and having competitive, or sorry, having a competition in the market and just people trying all these different things. Whether it works or not, it's kind of fun when it happens, you know? And what, like, how do you come across being like, I want to make this. This this is what I want to do. Like, how does <laughs> yeah. that, like, how do you wake up one day and that just happens? Yeah, I actually still remember it. Like, it was pretty straightforward. I I was a game developer working at a couple of different game studios around Toronto and um, starting to look for something to do in my spare time, like something that I just dig to work on, uh, like a passion project kind of thing. And I was just, I I already was collecting hockey games and was playing Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey on the N64 one day and was just like, oh shit, I could just make this. Like, I already know how to make games. Let me just make this and try to make this. 
um, and basically spent a few months, two years actually, sorry, uh, building the prototype. Once I was like, okay, this is kind of sweet. I see the business case for it. I see an opportunity in the market. Um, I just went full in and it's been four years straight now working full time on this. Do you find any different challenges? Cause you've worked for different companies, like working basically for yourself by yourself, as opposed yeah. to working maybe with a different team, but only on a narrow uh, part of the whole, the whole scope. Yeah, there's uh, an infinite amount that I've learned from this whole experience. Comparable. Uh, from what I learned from working full time for years and years and then doing this now, you just learn so much. But even just to the minutia of like, instead of showing up at a company and doing a very small little bit of a huge piece of the pie, it's crazy to see the entire architecture of the entire project, understand where all the code is and how it all works and how it all works together. And when you see something not working, knowing, okay, it's probably somewhere in that and kind of having an idea. And uh, the only, yeah, it's awesome. It's pretty sweet. Um, just no one tells you whether you're doing it right or not. That's a bit tough. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I saw that you, um, so you have a, you have someone that's been in net also motion capture, uh, doing yeah. motion capture or cause that's not you in net, right? You have a friend or no. someone that does it. No, 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 no. That was actually, uh, I think he's, he's got a pretty successful social media presence too. Um, right now too. Uh, damn, damn. That's rude. I'm going to look it up cause it's, we'll, we'll plug it in the description. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll get that after. Um, he's a he's a something the goalie, Nick the goalie. There we go. Uh, his name's Nick the goalie. He's got a bunch of social media accounts, and he's usually got like a camera behind the net, and he's talking smack while. Oh, that's him from TikTok. Kind of yeah, is yeah, him, yeah. Like, he's, he's like awesome. in a beer. I know exactly who that is because I scroll <laughs> all day like a zoomer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've I've had um some ad reads going on a Toronto uh podcast, a po Toronto hockey podcast, SDPN, and um. He heard it through there. Sorry, this Vancouver uh, motion capture company heard about the game through there and they called me up and they're just like, we want to make a hockey game so bad. Can we just work on a hockey game with you? And uh, and so we worked together to kind of do this preliminary sort of motion capture session. Um, a friend of mine from university was able to go and like help them out with the videography. He ended up having to pick up the stick and put on the suit and ride around on the skates because the other guy uh, had an emergency he had to deal with. But um, yeah, it was... I wish I could have been there. That would have been awesome, but it's out in Vancouver. Um, so it's so cool to see our, I gave them our character models all rigged up and uh, they hooked it up, got the animations connected and it's so cool. I've got tons of footage. It's like three hours worth of footage of uh, all the video, all of them recording and all that. So I can't wait to get that pumping out more. So I know you that? mentioned some of the, oh, no. go ahead. So what's that whole process like working with a third party company like out in Vancouver? Are you, do you just get hours of reels that you then have to watch through or? What's that? Whole uh, well, I got that? like a full, yeah, I got like a long video, for example, of them doing behind the scenes shooting and stuff like that too. Um, but they're going to give me uh, just animation clips that I'll use and attach to the different uh, rigs uh, for all the animations. It's going to be awesome. I'm really excited about it. Uh, that's part of what the Kickstarter is for is to help fund that process to take the keyed animations that are all hand done um, and done relatively quickly considering uh, the resources that I've had. Um, and then to bring in these really super smooth motion capture animations are just gonna completely transform the game. I know you have three different types of players. So you've like the heavy yeah. one, like the middle, like McDavid one and like the little speedy one. So do yeah. you have to have your mocap people basically be like, okay, you're this giant hulking thing. Like go out there and act <laughs> like you're, you know, 400 pounds. Yeah, yeah, you know, if we do, like, I'd love to be able to do separate, maybe that's a uh, Hockey Heroes 2, but um, I would love separate animations for, like, small, medium, and large characters. Right now, they're all using the same ones, um, but they'll be moving at different paces and stuff like that based on the size of their characters. So you mentioned your Kickstarter, and that's, like, one of the things that we felt intriguing, and Pez, I want to talk about your pledge, because yeah. you upstaged me, which is great. So Always. this launched, uh, what, 12 days ago, right? Yep. With a goal of, I don't have the Canadian number, but, uh, oh, 25,000 Canadian, and you're already yeah. at 20,000, so you're, uh, what, 80, 80% of the way there, 327 yeah. backers with 18 days to go. Yeah. How good does that feel, like, the first off, when you launch a Kickstarter immediately in the first day you see 30%, like, does that, is that validating? It's hard, man, it's like, every two seconds I'm going between validation and like fear that it's not gonna either it's not gonna get to the hundred or once i get to that i won't even hit some of the loftier numbers i'm hoping to hit and then there's the terror of like 
I got to make a game, like finish the game after this and like hoping you have enough funds to be able to afford, whether it's marketing or the art. So there's just, there's a lot going into it. And I know I'm just in my head, but um, part of it is trying never to get too high or too low kind of thing. So um, while it's amazing and just seeing friggin' $20,000 is super awesome. Um, I, uh, I try to keep it a bit even keeled kind of thing. Cause unfortunately games cost a shit ton of money to make and good art art talent and stuff like that they cost a lot of money and marketing mm -hmm. so yeah i'm super stoked but there's still so much more road to do here you know the rewards are great so like you had a price for like early on it was like i don't know i felt like i was losing money not getting it but like the early edition and then the like fact that it's on consoles is great right <laughs> yeah. i, I saw that exchange, right? i'm like i'm about to get some clout no <laughs> but pez big yeah. boy uh big pockets pez pez which reward did you get and tell us a little about it because it's pretty cool all right so I'm a big, I will say when it comes to Kickstarters, I'm a uh, lucky charm. I've kickstarted games. <laughs> I've kickstarted have gone through uh, Friday the 13th, uh, sea of stars. Great. So we are like, you know, we, we, uh, blasphemous. Like we only do the best of the best. So there you go. after meeting, after meeting Chris, after playing the demo, like three, four, five, six, seven, eight times, I played it a bunch. Um, we, I decided that I wanted, I wanted a piece of this. I wanted a piece of this. So I decided to back, I backed the create a shinny player. Uh, Sick. I'm one awesome. of those backers. So I want a hulking yeah. bearded beauty uh, known as, uh, I'm either going to call him Pezzy or Pezzy boy. I haven't figured it out yet, Sick. but he's going to be in Sick. this game. So awesome. I decided, you know, we talk a lot. I, I, for those that have that obviously know the show, I am the indie geek on three dads on console. So when indie developers go on Kickstarter and I'm interested in what they're doing, I'm going to throw them some money. A, we, inter you know, Chris gave us his own time at PAX. We enjoyed the game. I played it before. I played it multiple times after that. I've enjoyed it. Why not let this, this man try and live his dream of creating a hockey game for, you know, a hundred and forty bucks you. or whatever. Yeah, man. That's so huge. Like, it's so huge. I can't even, it's hard to even process, uh, until I like when I scroll through the names of people who have backed, it's super gratifying. Like I'm so appreciative of it. So I really appreciate you doing that. That's awesome. Um, you're gonna help get yourself a dope ass hockey game and get your character in it and all that. So it's a pretty good deal wait. for you. But at the same time, it's making a huge difference for me. Um, getting money as like a no name indie is real tough. And never mind making a friggin' hockey game. Um, the rest of the world doesn't consider it a real video game. So, <laughs> well, you said, you know, and you know, the people don't know you've gotten a lot of like press recently, especially in yeah. like the hockey world. And I want to, you know, ask you a little bit about that. Your, your recent yeah. travels. Cause, uh, before the show, we, before it's like, this is like a grassroots campaign that I've never seen before. And it's fascinating. So could you tell folks about that? Yeah. I mean, I just kind of figured that the, because I don't have a lot of money to be spending on marketing, I figured Let's just go straight to all the places where people really love hockey. Um, so even like tomorrow night in Toronto, I've got a hockey bar that's playing Leafs Habs opening night of the playoffs for both of them. and or Sorry, of the season for both of them. And I'm going to have a big setup there and we're going to get after it playing hockey. And then we went to Boston. I went obviously specifically because it's Boston, uh, knowing there'd be a bunch of Bruins and hockey fans there um, to PAX East. That was really cool. My first time ever at PAX or any gaming competition com uh, convention, actually. Um, so that was really sweet. Um, but the idea is to kind of go directly to people who care about hockey um, and focus on those areas. I'm actually talking with people in Scandinavia now and trying to hit up that market because I know they all love their hockey, right? And um, this isn't an NHL specific brand or anything like that. It's just about like celebrating the love of hockey uh, in a video game kind of thing. And so, yeah, I'm hoping they'll catch on to that too. You put a fake Timu Solani in, they're all by it. Guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. What was his nickname? Was he he? That's Burry's the Finish Flash or something, right? Mm -hmm. Who was the Finish Flash? I'm pretty sure it was Burry. Oh yeah. Burry. Who's Timu? What's Timu's nickname? I mean, sorry. I Doesn't know. matter. Sorry, she's gone. <laughs> so, but um, talk oh, to ahead, me guys. about the whole Pax experience. What's it like? First time being at a game convention, and then yeah. per, and then having a table at a game convention where you have to talk to thousands you know potentially thousands of people uh and get yeah. interviewed by folks and do that whole thing and it was just you and your uh girlfriend that my we wife. met yeah. or yeah, your wife, wife sorry. yeah in. so yeah. it was just you yeah. and your yeah. wife doing the doing this whole thing being there for what three days four days talk to oh, us man, about that one of, thing. one of the most exhausting activities but like so cool i don't know if it was worth the money yet 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. it's a big investment to do that whole thing. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah, but um, the experience itself was fantastic. It was so cool. Um, just got like a crash course of like the gaming industry and stuff like that and getting to see all the different booths and see how everyone else did it. Meeting other developers was always awesome. And then going from COVID, seeing nobody, me working in the basement here by myself, basically, um, to being out in the world, it was really, really cool. And the best part is obviously like watching people play the game is sweet. It's so cool when you got like you guys were two on two, just having fun, smashing into the boards. Every time the it's crazy that even in video games, like every time a fight breaks out, everyone gets mad stoked. Like <laughs> they were all really into it. Every no matter who was walking by, it was so funny. Um, but the best thing is watching people play the game and having a positive experience with it. That's the best part. Did you also get to work with that SDPN as well? You said. Yep. Can you yep. tell us about yep. that experience? Because there's a lot of people who are big fans of that uh, that network. Yeah, they're awesome and they deserve endless love because they're such great people, um, like away from the camera or the whatever, the podcast mic. Um, they're all really, really awesome and they've been great to work with. Um, I got them as characters in the game now, which is dope. Uh, we're going to have their jerseys in the game for their uh, Dangle Navy. Um, but yeah, I got to play on the couch with them. We played the game a little bit, four of us. It was really sweet. Uh, very surreal experience. Um, they're just really good people and they're awesome to work with and I love everything they do. So what's next? So there's 20% of the way to go. You know, yeah. what's, I guess, you know, let's say you had a hundred percent aside from the pressure and like, you know, the, the, the self things like what, what happens next? Uh, when campaign over or when we hit a hundred in the campaign, right? Like in a couple of days kind of thing. Yeah. Cause it's, I think you're, oh, yeah. I think you're doing Stretch a few goals. days. I got mad. I got tons of ideas, not ideas, but like planned things that if we can hit that first bit, I want to get to one of them being the motion capture would be amazing. Um, that would completely change the game completely and make just really awesome animations. So once we can get that hundred percent, it's all about hitting those stretch goals. Um, we got that. There's another one that may or may not include driving around some sort of wheeled vehicle on the ice. I don't know. Some sort of mini game between periods. I don't know. Um, so yeah, I got a bunch of different little ideas of, of, Features I would really love to get in the game, but they got to be kind of a bit more stretch goals than the initial bit. So there's so much more to put in the game, basically, that I'd love. And what would you say is your favorite retro game that really inspired this? Because at your booth, you had a bunch of old school games. I think that's what drew us there because we're old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. I'll never forget this one kid was holding up the NES cartridge and uh, looking at, like, Ice Hockey or Blades of Steel, whichever one I had. And... Um, was just like playing with it. And I was like, what's up, man? And he's just like, I've never held one of these before. I was like, what are you, wow. I feel like, oh no, oh, wow. Oh, I was like, oh no, you never held it before. What are we doing? Um, but yeah, my favorite is for sure, um, Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey is the number one. Um, that one mostly for things like the ease of doing awesome stuff. So like scoring goals, hitting people, like that's pretty much it, right? Um, and I just loved that idea that you're never out of the game because you can always catch back up by just scoring and it's all about scoring and the game ends up eight to seven with like four goals in the last 30 seconds and there's not much cooler than that. Um, and then obviously good old hits. Hits is a oh, huge yeah. one. Um, just from doing some awesome, unique stuff. I wish it was faster. I find mm -hmm. it a bit slow, but uh, that's why I made my own hockey game, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so you have uh also been i've been following you guys on twitter obviously you've been going back and playing some of these older uh nhl titles oh, yeah. uh oh, yeah. which which ones as i know waba is a big fan of the nhl series uh i've been jumping back into the 2k series uh on yep. pc what has been your which one have you enjoyed the most uh i was enjoying 04 for the nostalgia factor like Love how you have it right Hedor, there. Heater on the cover too. Look at that. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's who it is. I got that on a game Danny table Healy. over there. Yep. Danny yeah. Healy. Um, that one's got the like the nostalgia so strong because I'll never forget like having the PS2 and getting that game real early and all that. Um, but for me lately, it's been 09 NHL 09. I really have enjoyed that gameplay. Uh, I'm playing through a season or a playoff right now, Vancouver against Dallas. Um, I love going through the rosters too. It's so much fun. Um, I have two 2K ones. One of the discs constantly breaks, so I just stopped using it, and the other one's not in the case, so I gotta find it. Nice. Yeah, but I do <laughs> love the 2K. They're fun, man. They're completely different. It's so cool to play a completely different uh, hockey game. 
Yeah, especially uh, I found when you like load in uh, NHL 2K6 and then you play NHL 06 and how different yeah. those games were, right? Yeah. NHL 06 was like kind of arcadey and then you go into 2K yeah. and it's a lot more slower and like you actually have to plot out what you want to do offensively. So it's just yeah. so strange to see. Yeah, I was on a podcast earlier actually just kind of talking about um, the difference between like the eras of like hockey now versus hockey then and kind of how they got represented in video games. And uh, even going back and playing 09, it took me a while to stop just holding boost all the damn time and realize you're supposed to slow down and like stick handle through the middle and yeah. like be all patient with it. And it's just kind of cool playing a completely different um, hockey game, like a completely different hockey game. So, I started in 2015, so I'm... Um, it's true. <laughs> I'm new. Literally the worst one you could play. Well, Bergeron was on the cover. It was a big... I mean, I played Wayne Gretzky, you know, back before, but getting back into new, it was 2015. And everyone's like, oh, that's the worst one. I'm like, I, would, like, I wouldn't know. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fair. That's fair. Um, that's so... Yeah. So well, as an indie developer, like, yeah. it's just you, right? Developing yep. the whole thing. Um you've had a few artists like work with you on everything or have you done the art as well? Oh, I can't draw for shit. I'm really <laughs> bad. And, and literally every time I try to do, I'm really close, uh, like friends and work friends with my main artist that I work with. Um, and he loves to just, he hates it when I try to do anything art related. It's so funny. Cause I, I every time I do stupid shit. Um, can I swear on here? I'm so sorry. Yeah, can yeah, I yeah. Do let him yeah, fly. Basic. You'll be yeah. Okay, you'll be awesome. Yeah. You don't want me to, but um, <laughs> 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 it's like kicked off a of YouTube. I'm just. <laughs> um, what were we even just talking about? Uh, your Sorry. artist, uh, art. buddy. Oh, yeah. I don't do art. I can't do art. Um, I was doing art at the beginning. Um, with the animations, the models, all that kind of stuff. Um, you could look back kind of in the archives of like really old versions of the game. Um, there's ones where like their little capsules going around with like rectangular sticks and stuff like that, um, just to get the foundations of customizing your character, the stats integration and all that kind of stuff. Um, but basically ever since uh, I realized that if I want to be a legitimate hockey game and be legitimate in the eyes of people who's only at the time, only competitor was the EA franchise. Um, I thought it needed a certain level of quality for people to even kind of consider as an option. Um, so I made sure to invest a lot in the art and try to get a distinct style. Um, the cartoon, like Saturday morning cartoon um, vibe and the anime vibe was something I always wanted because I wanted you to be like superhero hockey players is the basic idea. Um, but yeah, I needed art and I need artists. And uh, yeah, even music. Like for the music, I thought, man, I could just, you could throw shit, you could throw it together, right? You can do boop, boop, boops, you'll be fine, right? Um, but I ended up finding a uh, hip hop artist here in Toronto because I want it to be like lo fi hip hop style. Oh. So the audio, the music is all like we've got 10 tracks, um, completely custom soundtrack. It's like lo fi hip hop with arcadey sound effects and uh, hockey organ fanfare, like dun 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 dun. Pretty cool. Um, in all really cool, creative uh, ways that they're done. So it's, it's really, really, really cool. Sorry, my phone keeps going off. No worries. Yeah, um, it's awesome. He, he did a great job. So to folks who uh, might not be aware of the Kickstarter, what no, is like your e-pitch to folks to, you know, get in now? Because this thing's getting funded. Like we're not, like we're talking yeah. about it as if it is because frankly it's going to. There's 18 days left. Like the amount of press you're getting is fantastic. Um, so thank you for letting us be a part of it. But like it's, it's, you know, what would, what pitch for people who, you know, maybe aren't familiar through a game would you give in order to get involved right now in the Kickstarter? Oh. Do we lose him? I think oh, he might have. Back. Sorry about okay. that, guys. Sorry no, it's good. It's, we're not doing it live, so it's good. Yeah, that's right. Cool. But Sorry about that. I can, I, can, I, can, I can repeat the question if that's if needed. Why should someone get involved in the Kickstarter now? Like, what's your like elevator pitch to people who maybe aren't aware of the Kickstarter? Uh, first of all, there's some really cool rewards. I think they're awesome. Uh, you can get like a jersey. You can get your face in the crowd. Uh, my friend called me up the other day and was like, "Can I, if I get three faces in the crowd, can I have my family, like me, my wife, and my daughter?" And I was like, "Yeah, man, let's do it." So I'm gonna have awesome. like them as as members in the crowd, which is really adorable. Um, Discounted prices obviously are huge. There's going to be a bunch of discounts. I just put a discount on again um, for Steam Next Fest because we're part of the Steam Next Fest, and uh, I think there might be another one tomorrow night when I've got the 
the pop-up at the bar. So there's just going to be like a bunch of different opportunities to get the game for like pennies. If you're buying NHL right now, uh, you can end up just getting this game for 20 bucks Canadian, our game, um, which is like 47 cents American or something like that. Right? <laughs> something I think like it's like, I think it's like actually 14, which is like, yeah. you can yeah. buy a pack or yeah. you can <laughs> buy a yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just want to give you guys, like, a lot of value, too. Like, the the whole game is really about, like, we talked about these old hockey games and stuff like that. But in terms of a package and what you're actually getting, that's really what I want to deliver is you buy a game for one price. You get a full experience. You get a story mode. You get the offline playing with your friends kind of thing. And uh, I just feel like it's definitely worth the value. Um, and it's just tons of fun and it's super cheap and it helps me, uh, uh, actually make the game and make more games and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, there's cool you, opportunities to just get some really cool stuff. You mentioned a story mode without going into too much detail. Yeah. What can folks yeah. expect from that single player story mode? The hockey gods are frozen over the earth and the only way to f save the world is to beat them in a hockey tournament. That's basically the idea. Um, when I mentioned I was playing Wayne Gretzky's 3D hockey, um, as soon as I started like getting brainstorming on design and ideas here it was like okay well i can make like a regular season and playoffs cool that makes sense um the idea was to take those individual arcade games that you play and try to build a connection between them um and then i was like wait why would i do that why don't i just do the more fun things so like something like just playoffs and then you realize like i don't even have to have real teams or real anything like the just go ridiculous with it this is a video game so that's where the sort of space jam fantasy completely ridiculous justification for playing hockey came from excellent and what is he what's what can people expect from like the multiplayer um you know content as well um that i'm just trying to bring back the fun back in university where i was sitting on the couch couch co-op with all my guys all of us in the house for we have way too much time on our hands so we could play a best of seven series in the middle of the afternoon and um just being able to like sit together four of you choose do you want to play a best of three best of five best of seven series or a single game um eventually you want to have a lot of variants that you can put in there like being able to tweak different settings in the game because that's always fun um but basically just like a really fun hit each other the whole time, score a lot of goals, all that kind of stuff. I think every game usually tends to have like 80 to 100 hits per team um, if you're playing it right. So yeah, there's a lot of hits. It's just fun. Fights, players get turned into pigeons, there's power-ups, all that kind of stuff. The shooter tutor power-up, by the way, the best one. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That got the biggest, there's, um, that got the biggest yeah. reaction. Yep. There's there's two uh there's two constants that keep coming up at every like booth or whatever I do for the game. One is kids not knowing what a start button is. Oh god. Oh no. Oh I'm sorry. The, the, they, they don't deserve to play. Figure it out. <laughs> yeah. You're just like push the start button. They're all like, what? The fuck? <laughs> it's like in Simpsons, um, push any key. Where's the any key? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And the other one is whether people know the term shooter tutor or not. That's the other one. And really? I find that hilarious. Yeah, so oh, if they right. don't know what a shooter tutor is, you just say like a cardboard cutout, and then they kind of understand what at least the concept is. But I find it hilarious who or who does or doesn't know. It's just funny to me. Actually, on that same uh, on that same note, um, someone from the UK was playing the game a couple days ago, uh, the story mode, and I was like, I'm making this super hockey and Canadian, so it's full of ridiculous terms, and uh, he's just like, I don't know what any of this means. <laughs> <laughs> awesome you have to add a glossary in there somewhere so people can Ooh, that is such a good idea excuse me while i write that down excuse me while i write that down look at that pat i'm an idea man what can i say no oh, he's an More. idea man he's clearly a, an incredible investor like he's already there we go such a good go. smart in. savvy oh. investor don't don't talk him up too much he'll never let me forget it that's right um. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna listen to this before i go to bed every night <laughs> <laughs> self-affirmation so just a few final questions um for you chris so when this gets again when this gets fully funded when can people expect to see the game um released and on which uh platforms uh so right now you can play it uh the demo at least of it um i actually just two days ago pushed the story mode uh i kind of calling it like a prologue demo um it's sort of like a bite-sized idea of what the vision is for the story mode so you like uh, dialogue between teammates, that overarching story. Um, you show up at practice, uh, all this different stuff. You uh, unlock equipment, upgrade your character. It's all kind of in this little bite-sized vertical chunk. 
um, vertical slice. So yeah, you can play that on Steam right now. Um, this winter is when I'm trying for the whole full release. That's the scheduled release. Um, kind of while you're already outside playing hockey or in the vibes for outdoor hockey rinks and the NHL season's kind of getting into that, okay, we know who's going where kind of thing. Um, so this winter is the idea for uh, the full launch of the Steam version. And um, while I've already started the test on Xbox and I'm a PlayStation developer, that'll be later on in 2024 because I don't have time. Makes sense. So Steam Deck 2, Pez, that's for you. you can yeah, play in bed. I can't wait. I can't wait to, to, yeah. to check it out. And I when it released on there and uh, they said it worked great, so that's awesome. Awesome. There you go. And when it releases, if people don't get it now for the low price of like fourteen dollars US, um, what what's the price point for the game? Probably around release. probably around thirty, thirty five Canadian. Okay, Just so. gonna decide on depend on what the full feel of the package comes off as to me like with a, it make sure there's enough value and that's um yeah that it's priced well perfect so yeah that's and that's about 22 dollars 23 dollars us so again if you want to get in now you can basically pre-order but like it's being used you know you've just found out what it's being used for it's not just hey give us this and the game releases um any final yeah. things you want to leave our uh, our folks with before we let you go that's a really good point. Like, if you pre if you want to eventually give a try to these hockey arcade games and stuff like that, you can not only play them eventually, but now's your chance to literally invest in trying to bring back these types of games and just people and companies that want to actually create good hockey games and try to bring back competition in the market. Um, it's just your way to literally like invest into uh, our studio and our games and the kind of stuff we want to keep making. And I just want to keep making super fun sports games. So I got tons coming, um, but this is the first one and this is kind of the dream game sort of thing. Um, yeah, it's awesome. Check it out on Steam right now. Grab a bunch of your friends. It's the best way to play um, and just smash each other into the boards. Perfect. And wishlist it now. That also uh, helps support, so make yeah. sure to do that. Uh, final question, predictions for Leafs. Real Leafs. Uh, uh, losing in four in the second round, probably. I love it. Oh, love it. Sweep in the second round? They will hey. win the division. <laughs> he added the heartbreak, but at least... No, it's, it's, way better. it's way better to think you accomplish something and then get it taken out from underneath you. Where do That's they, more Leafs. Where do they finish in the Atlantic first, right? Yeah, I figure first makes yeah. kind of sense. Yeah, why not? Like, I don't really care too much about those preseason uh, sort of projections because they're always hilariously wrong and people are just talking because we all want to listen. Um, but uh, yeah, it's all going to come down to the playoffs. I love the new dudes, man. I love – you guys had Bertuzzi, right? Was he with Boston? Am I wrong? Yeah, he yeah, was. For five yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, a that's minute. a hockey player, right? That's a, yeah, that was a hot minute for sure. He's got, he's got a missing tooth. He just looks like a gamer. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. So the the biggest thing with the Leafs is uh, I didn't like their depth before, and no one really grinded before. So having Domi, having Reeves, I'm so excited for. And uh, it just they were they were soft before. They needed more grit. So some of these guys they brought in, I like that they work hard and they got grit sure. and all that. So um, I'm definitely really stoked for the season. I can't wait. It's dark at seven o'clock here. I'm ready. Like let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask. Well, uh, thank you very much again for joining us, Chris. Um, we will thank be putting you. the link to the kickstarter in the description of the video you'll see it on our twitter also if you want more odr hockey heroes updates you can follow at odr hockey heroes on twitter is there anywhere else that you're posting is are you in this uh, the other ones as well but twitter is kind of the one i'm on the most perfect no big sets excellent well thank you again very much for joining us thank you uh to those out there listening make sure to catch our future episodes on youtube.com slash three dads on a call so if you had fun or if you want more developer uh interviews Thank you for joining us on Three Dads on a Console SideQuest Chat, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.